Mr. Bray joining us? Okay, thank you, thank you. All right, have a close, close the door. Okay. All right, we're all set. Thank you very much. When I opened my storm briefing yesterday afternoon, I said my highest priority as the governor of the state of New York is to protect the public and their safety. Uh, thanks to my amazing partners in this room, uh, starting with our county executive, Mark Polentarth, and our mayor of the city of Buffalo, Byron Brown, uh, we have worked in incredible coordination uh, with one single mission, that is to make sure that Western New Yorkers are protected during the duration of this storm. I also want to thank the thousands of state, county, and city workers who put themselves out on the line uh, during very hazardous conditions to keep the roads clear, to do the pre-salting, our law enforcement who are enforcing our travel bans. And so uh, let's remember all those and the countless people who are monitoring data as it's coming in and giving us real-time information, again, with the objective of keeping Western New Yorkers safe. And I also know that uh, we all have our favorite teams, right, Mayor? That's right. That's right. Uh, and my favorite team is the team uh, that I brought here from Albany, and that is the Green Team, who are so expert in dealing with storm response. And I want to thank Commissioner Jackie Bray from Homeland uh, Services, uh, Commissioner Marie Therese Dominguez, DOT Commissioner, Director of the Thruway Authority, Frank Hoare, Commissioner Rory Christian from the Department of Public Service, and Colonel Dan Cooney from the State Police. Now, we all know as Western New Yorkers how dangerous the triple threat is. The triple threat of icy cold temperature with high winds and uh, the blowing snow and how dangerous that all can be. Uh, it's life-threatening weather. That's exactly what's going on now in the vicinity of where there would have been a football game playing today in Orchard Park and overall throughout the South Downs. So we've been working closely together and I would say that the forecast of this storm really underestimated uh, the ferocity of this storm. Number one, the volume of snow was predicted to be one to two inches an hour, which is a lot of snow over a 36 to 40 hour period. But what we've seen since this morning, that the snow bands are staying longer, they're broader, and also we're now seeing in real time four to five, possibly six inches an hour uh, in the South Towns in particular. So what we're expecting now over the next couple of hours, in the South Towns between now and 5 p.m., that same rate of snow falling three, four, five, six inches an hour, again, more intense than previously thought. Wind gusts were predicted to be 35 to 40 miles an hour. Uh, they are no, now gusting up to 50 miles an hour. What that means, whiteout conditions, limited or no visibility, and again, very, very dangerous on our roads. Uh, after five o'clock, the conditions in the South Towns will be a little bit better but still could be very hazardous with snowfall rates of one to three inches an hour, still coming down and still blowing. And it still makes it very difficult for our state and county and, and city plows to do their jobs. The lake effect snow affects each community differently. Uh, we saw this afternoon in the North Country as well. Uh, we saw widespread four to, four to eight inches. The North Town, I'm not talking about the North Town, I'm talking about the North Country, the North Country up near in Jefferson County and Watertown, which we're watching very closely. They're expecting at least another foot of snow, snow tonight. Again, uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, wind blowing at intense rates as well. So we're closely communicating th with those individuals as well. Now, as you heard earlier, improvements in Erie County allowed us in consultation with the county executive who determined that we could lift the ban in certain towns in the southeast part of Erie County. That was lifted at 9 a.m. today. Uh, we're announcing now that about 3.30, we'll be lifting the travel bans in the north towns, but only in these communities. Grand Island, Tonawana, Amherst, Clarence, and Newstead. Again, a travel advisory means remains in effect. This does not mean you can leave these towns and go to other towns that are still in the area of the bans. So we're gonna be very intentional about making sure those bans are still enforced. And we'll make sure that we don't wanna, we don't wanna ban in place a single minute longer than necessary, but we can never let it be uh, one minute too short either. I know they're disruptive. I know they're frustrating. And that's why we're trying to be targeted in our approach, uh, opening up some of the communities that are not as affected, but being very conscientious about the fact that there are still 
many high impact towns that are being affected at this very moment and it is too dangerous to lift the bans at those times or on the New York State Thruway overall. So we'll be updating Western New Yorkers again around seven o'clock today on what's going on uh, regarding any bans for the rest of Erie County and the city of Buffalo. Uh, the mayor and I are talking about what he wants to do with the city in a couple of hours. Again, this, this time also allows the crews to do their jobs so people aren't stuck on side streets, which is important, so that, that'll continue. Now, enforcement. You do not wanna have to get a ticket and deal with this later. So the best advice is follow the bans, stay at home uh, for whatever time is deemed necessary. Again, it'll be as minimal as necessary. State troopers have already issued over 360 tickets, uh, primarily on the New York State Thruway, which uh, continues to be a place where people are violating the bans. And I wanna give another message out to the truck drivers, including the one that was within the last hour, violated the ban, came through the Lackawanna toll barrier, jackknifed as could be predicted and blocked the lanes of traffic, three lanes of traffic for at least a half an hour. So that's what we're trying to avoid. This is what we've seen in every other storm. This is where people get stranded. This is where people can freeze in their cars. And while we've had very few incidences of this because we preemptively shut down the throughway and got the warnings out and the bans. Uh, a single incidence like this of someone violating the rules and the ban uh, can cause a real problem. And again, for our first responders to be taken off of their jobs and have to go dig out a truck uh, who should never ship it down the road in the first place is frustrating. So no one should be on the throughway. And again, the, no, other, no, other, uh, road, no other roads are open outside those southeastern towns in Erie County and those Northern communities will be opened at 3.30 today. So again, it's, about not, it's not about unnecessary restrictions, it's about keeping New Yorkers safe and allowing first responders and ambulances, utility crews to respond. Now, speaking about utility crews, we talk about the lessons of the past. Uh, we've always tried to get as many utility crews pre-positioned uh, before a storm hits so they can build up resiliency and, and understand the vulnerabilities, areas that could be most likely to lose power. I'm really, really proud and I wanna thank Rory Christian, the, uh, the head of the Public Service Commission who is on the ground with us here today uh, for his work in working with the utilities. We, at any given time, we had thousands without power, but very quickly restored within just a couple of hours. And as someone who's lived through sometimes days and days without power, at home with little kids in Hamburg uh, not that long ago. We know how important it is to get the power restored and I'm really grateful for them that there's only about 100 people now without power here. Same with uh, the North Country up in Jefferson County. Uh, large wide scale power outages mostly restored and now where we're seeing power outages are because of snow squalls that have now hit central New York, uh, the southern tier and the capital region. So that's what we're dealing with now. We have about 12,000 power outages there. We did have crews pre-positioned in those regions as well. So they're doing their work now. So the storm is not over. It could have been far worse, but it's still not a safe conditions to go out. So we wanna make sure people can, you can continue staying home uh, just a few more hours and we'll be through this all. Now, I do wanna say this. I know there's a lot of excitement around tomorrow's game. And you know we could not risk the safety of our fans and the personnel at the stadium and all of our first responders and law enforcement uh, because of the triple threat where you get the high winds, you get the bitter cold and the blowing snow. Uh, now at game time on Monday, here's what we expect. Weather conditions will be very cold. They'll be in the teens and even wind chill factors as low as zero, uh, maybe to nine degrees, but that's gonna be very, very cold. But this will be without the danger of the winds and the blinding snow and the hazardous traffic conditions for those as they travel to the stadium or leaving based on current predictions. So that is the better dynamic than by far better dynamic than we would have had today. I'm not saying it's gonna be pleasant, uh, but conditions won't be life threatening either. Just as a note, Monday will be the 30th anniversary of what was the coldest football game ever played in Buffalo Bills history here in Western New York. Uh, it was zero with wind chills reaching minus 32. So if you start feeling cold, think back about the people who were there 30 years ago and it was a lot colder 
and remember that resulted in a win that led us to the Super Bowl. So there's good karma playing in the bitter cold here in Buffalo, and that's what we're hoping for tomorrow. Uh, so with that, go Bills. Thank you, Western New Yorkers, for listening to us. We would not have gotten through this the way we did at this point. So please continue to heed our warnings. Thanks for your cooperation. And again, I uh, look forward to seeing you on the other side of a big win tomorrow night. With that, I'd like to turn it over to County Executive Mark Polenkars. Thank you, Governor. Thank you very much, Governor. Uh, this has been a team effort. I want to thank you and your team for their incredible work. Uh, we've gotten through the storm a lot better than we may have because of the, the work and the partnerships that we have with our state uh, partners in county government as well as our, our city and town partners. And I want to thank you and your incredible team because they've been here working very hard across the hours to ensure that we're protecting our community, which is the number one priority. As the governor noted, the uh, travel ban will be lifted for the North Towns, which includes Grand Island, City of Tonawanda, Town of Tonawanda, Amherst, uh, Clarence, uh, Town of Newstead, as well as the villages Akron and, and Williamsville, officially going into effect at 3.30, so basically in a half hour. Uh, but the one thing we want people to know is the gates will still be down on the 290 because we do not want people getting on the 290 uh, or the 190 in Grand Island and then driving down into the belly of the beast, which is this really terrible snow ban. It's as simple as that. I was there not too long ago with our Commissioner of Public Works, William Gary, who's here, uh, as we were uh, making a delivery, dropping someone off and picking some stuff off and checking out conditions, and they were as bad as we've ever seen. Uh, the snow is falling at least five inches an hour. Uh, we are getting reports that uh, since this morning, it appears some of the areas have already received 30 inches of snow, which is going to make an impact for tomorrow's game. The game will be held. Uh, we're going to have our, our crews out there cleaning the roads. The Bills will have their crews out there cleaning the lots. It is going to impact the snow that's in the stadium, but it's also going to impact the snow that is in these secondary lots, especially the ones that are grass-based. I don't know if they're going to be able to get the snow off those lots. I doubt it. And therefore, that's going to reduce the number of parking spots available for the football game. So we're asking people to seriously think about carpooling to the game. If it's you and your buddy that drove and you're meeting your friends there, put all four of them or five of them in one vehicle because there's going to be less spots available to park for the football game. Uh, we feel very confident that we will be able to uh, clear the roads uh, in the affected areas because of the forecast. They are still receiving significant snow. There's a reason why the driving ban has not been lifted for those areas. And as the governor noted, the mayor and all of us are communicating about what we are also going to do with the city. And I know that will be revisited a little later this afternoon. Uh, but for now, the cities of La city of Lackawanna, town of Hamburg, village of Blaisdell, uh, town and village of Orchard Park, town and village of Lancaster, town of West Seneca, part of Chictawaga are no man's land. You should not be getting out of your vehicle unless you are an emergency personnel or getting in your vehicle and driving unless you're emergency personnel uh, because it is really bad out there. Uh, we saw, we went from seeing no one getting stuck in ditches to lots of cars getting stuck in ditches because you just can't see where you're going. Uh, you'd be driving down the road. We were driving down Southwestern Boulevard, Route 20, and like, where are we? And then all of a sudden, we'd see out of the corner of our eye the sign for SUNY Erie. But we couldn't see any of the campus. Uh, we were driving along, and you barely see the stoplights until pretty much you're under them. It's that bad. So there's a reason why the driving ban is in effect. Uh, we're taking the uh, actions to ensure that the areas that are not going to uh, be affected and should not see much more snow, that those driving bans are, li are lifted. But we want people to understand. That means if you live in the town of Amherst and Tonawanda, you can drive between the two of them, but don't go south. You're only going to put yourself at risk by going into an area that has really seen some, some bad weather. Uh, I want to thank the teams out there from law enforcement, uh, first responders, uh, the public works, everyone who's been out working in what are really horrible conditions. Because it's not just the amount of snow. Five inches of snow an hour is a tremendous amount of snow. But when you add onto it that it's falling in an area where the winds are blowing 30 miles an hour or greater, it is truly whiteout blizzard-like conditions. We may not meet the official definition of a blizzard, but it might as well be because when you can't see more than 20 feet in front of your vehicle as compared to a blizzard, which is anything a quarter mile or less, uh, it's, it's bad. So I want to thank all the first responders, everyone who's worked very hard through this period and will for the next few hours to get our community back open. 
Uh, as of right now, I am not aware of any fatalities, which is really good because in a storm this ferocious, we could have seen it. But the nice thing is people are following the driving ban. The governor did talk about the tickets that were issued, but the vast majority of the public and the commercial entities in our county are, are following the driving ban. It's my understanding most of the tickets that were done on the thruway were people who were trying to pass through, may not be from Erie County or Western New York, but were passing through and ignoring the ban. So to all uh, uh, Erie County residents and the Western New Yorkers, because Niagara County got hit pretty hard in the overnight hours and this morning as well, thank you for honoring the ban in Erie County. It's making our lives a heck of a lot easier because it allows us to get out there with our public works crews and get those roads open as soon as possible. Uh, we are going to revisit the areas that are being affected right now where the bans haven't been lifted. As we know, the, the city of Buffalo, the mayor will talk a little bit about that uh, later this afternoon. I do not expect uh, Orchard Park, West Seneca, Chictawaga, Lackawanna, those areas uh, for the bans to be lifted during, and certainly not during the daytime hours, and we are going to have to look at it into much into the evening hours. We do not want to lift the bans until the roads are passable. Just because we have a main road open doesn't mean that the town has been able to plow the side streets. Uh, and we don't want to announce that go out there and drive and then you get stuck 30 feet from your house because your street hasn't been plowed. So do not anticipate that the area that has been affected today uh, severely by the snow will be open any, certainly not in the daytime hours and probably uh, not today. We hope to have it so that we can get it all set and open uh, before a day like tomorrow morning, but we will all talk about that and revisit it later. With that, once again, thank you, Governor, and your incredible team. Really, it is an incredible team. They're on the ground. They're in communication with us. They know what we're doing. We know what they're doing. We are in concert, and it shows because uh, we're going to get through the storm a lot quicker than we would have in years past. So thank you. Thank you. And with that, I'll turn it over to my partner, who's also working hard with his team. They've got hundreds of vehicles on the roads of the city of Buffalo. I saw it myself today. Uh, uh, thank you, Mayor Brown. Thank you, thank you County thank you. Executive. Thank you very much, County Executive Poland Cars and Governor Hochul. Thank you so much for your great leadership, your personal constant communication with County Executive Poland Cars and me, and having uh, your key staff, your commissioners, on the ground here in Erie County, assisting us in whatever we need to get through this storm. We really appreciate it. Uh, it's been said by Governor Hochul, it's been said by County Executive Poland Cars, uh, the coordination, the cooperation, the partnership between the state, the county, and the city uh, has been exceptional. And I thank all of the city workers, the county workers, and the state workers at every level uh, for the effort uh, that they've put into dealing with the storm uh, that we have been facing. Uh, in the city of Buffalo, we now have 328 pieces of snow fighting equipment uh, that are in main and residential roads in the city. Uh, we want you to understand that there are a lot of roads in the city. Uh, there are dead-end streets. There are island uh, streets. There are narrow streets. There are streets without parking. We can't get to all of them simultaneously. But we have a large complement of vehicles and people working out there. Uh, we are in mains. We are in secondaries. And we're in residentials. And our uh, drivers, our workers, are working as fast as they possibly can. As Governor Hochul and County Executive Poland Carr said, uh, we have been evaluating the driving ban in the city of, of Buffalo. Uh, we will uh, coordinate in a few hours and reevaluate uh, the driving ban in the city. Uh, in the southern port part of the city, uh, we are expected to get hit uh, with more heavy snow, and we don't want to have vehicles in the city that can compromise the snow removal effort and that can compromise people's safety. With that many pieces of heavy equipment on the streets, we want to make sure that people are safe, that motorists are safe, uh, that pedestrians are, are safe, and that's why the driving ban is still in place. Um, 
We are enforcing the driving ban in the city of Buffalo. 164 tickets have been issued since the driving ban was imposed last night at 9 o'clock. Uh, but we also have had some accidents uh, with people violating the driving ban. There have been 26 property damage only accidents in the city, three accidents with injury. Fortunately, as County Executive Poland cars uh, said, no fatalities and 10 stranded motorists. If you are not out violating the driving ban, you wouldn't be a stranded motorist. So we're asking people to continue to cooperate. The cooperation has generally been very good in the city of Buffalo with a city of almost 280,000 people to only write 164 tickets. That's pretty good. Uh, recycling and sanitation services in the city will be pushed back one day. So if your garbage pickup, your recycling pickup is tomorrow, uh, normally it will be Tuesday and so on. Uh, there was one power outage still in the city of Buffalo where there are 21 customers affected. Uh, Governor Hochul talked about National Grid and uh, the utilities. Uh, National Grid has been excellent in communicating with the city, the county, and the state literally around uh, the clock. Uh, and unlike uh, the storms in 2022, we've seen power restoration not take days but take hours, uh, which is so much better for the health and safety of our residents. I want to finally uh, just again uh, thank all of the people that have been out working on this storm at the city, county, and state level. I want to thank the governor again uh, for her incredible uh, support and for personally uh, and consistently uh, being in touch with myself and the county ex executive. It makes a, a big difference. Uh, it means a lot and it has given us the ability uh, to really respond collectively very effectively to these storm conditions. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much. Uh, with that, we'll take any questions. Now, Matt, you want to call him again? I think a lot has changed since then. I mean, we always want to be prepared and always improve our operations after every single incident, after every incident, every every flooding event. It's it's uh, our standard practice to sit down and tabletop the exercise, say what could have been done better, what did we do right that we want to replicate. So there are many areas where there's more consistent coordination. Uh, the 911 call system, is, for number one, is working very very well. Uh, far fewer people without loss of power because we got the utilities in here early, but also even last year when the utilities were on the ground, one of the barriers was that there was uh, no pathway to the frozen uh, stations where they had to go do the repairs. So we have ensured that they have a plan to ensure the free access to those, uh, those substations that need to be reactivated. So something like that makes a world of difference. And again, the coordination uh, between the three of us and our teams is second to none. I don't think there's anywhere else in the country we have that level of, uh, of friendship which allows us to build with trust and to rely on each other to get the job done for New Yorkers. And so uh, I feel really good about the response. Again, we never rest on our laurels. Uh, we're always looking to improve again. So we'll have the same conversation after this storm and say, was there anything else we could have done better because uh, we're not through it just yet. No, uh, the game will not be pushed back again. I've spoken to uh, the commissioner of the NFL several times today. I've spoken to uh, the owner of the Buffalo Bills, again, about their preparations. There are volunteers who have walked to the stadium 
who are helping clean it up. We appreciate that. I would think by daylight hours tomorrow, it'll be safe for people to drive there and bring their shovels. And again, we have up until you know, the fans start coming in the stadium later in the afternoon. If it was a morning game, it'd be a little tougher, but a 4.30 game gives us that time. Again, the weather is not gonna be perfect. It will not be a sunny, warm day with no snow, but it's nothing we can't deal with. And so uh, I feel very confident uh, you know, the uh, opposing team uh, will get here. They'll get here safely. They'll be ready to play. And absolutely, the Bills are ready to play as well. Uh, we're, we'll be preparing with the same experiences we have with this one. Again, what's fascinating to me is the governor of the state. Literally every two days for the last two weeks, we've had a new weather system come. Uh, whether it's the coastal flooding we're dealing with on Long Island, the mid-Hudson area, which is having its third wave of flooding in the last couple of weeks uh, to the north country, all the way to western New York. And again, the southern tier and the mid part of our state are also dealing with snow squalls. So I would say we are in a permanent state of readiness that we know how to deploy people, we know all of our assets, uh, and using our state-of-the-art communication center, we can identify where the crews should be for utilities, where the generators need to be, where we need our search and rescue teams, as well as the plows and the supplies of salt. So uh, this is what the Dream Team uh, practices for. This is their Super Bowl, and I, I'm convinced they'll be ready for the next storm as well. All right, thanks everybody, appreciate you coming up. Thank you. Great to see you. Thanks, Thanks. Super Bowl theme. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.